Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. So, God helps some people and does not help some people. It's not a nature of God not to help but in adhering to certain principles from which he helps and from which he refuses to help. So he respects principles such as sowing, reaping, and all sorts. Now in Mark 10, there's an incident there about a rich man who was a ruler who came to meet Jesus and asked Jesus, I'm not going to go to the details of it, but in that conversation he had with the Lord Jesus, from verse 17, Mark chapter 10, from verse 17 to 27, he asked Jesus, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him, you know what's in the commandment? Obey them. And he said, Lord, I've observed everything, which includes don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't lie. He said, I've done all this from my youth. What else do I lack? In verse 21, the Lord Jesus beholding him, loved him, said to him, one thing you lack. Go thy way, sell whatsoever you have, give it to the poor, you shall have treasure in heaven. Come, take up the cross and follow me. The Bible says he was sad at that saying, sad at that saying, when they were grieved, for he had great possessions. Let me, okay, let me continue, let me finish. Jesus looked round about and said to his disciples, How hard shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? I'll paraphrase. How difficult it is for those who are rich to pass this exam. And the disciples were astonished. Wow. Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, meaning they didn't understand. How hard is it for those who trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Now, he couldn't sell those riches. He couldn't give them to the poor because people think that because he had a lot of riches. But Jesus, in further, made it clear to us the reason why he couldn't do it. In verse 25, he said, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle that for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God, they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? Who then will pass? If it's this tough, who then will pass this exam? Then he gave us a clincher. Jesus, looking upon them, said, whoever depends on man will fail this exam. But whoever depends on God will pass. For with God, all things are possible. Now, he failed the exam, not because he had a lot of money, but because God did not help him. And Jesus gave us the clue why God did not help him. How hard it is for them that trust. So having money was not his problem. Trusting in the money was his problem. The reason why God did not help him was that he trusted in his riches. There are people who have riches who have done far more than what they asked this man to do. And they could do it because God helped them. And the reason God helped them was because they did not trust in riches. And people reading this may just think rich people cannot assess the kingdom of God. No, rich people can, and they are candidates for the kingdom of God. But those who put their trust in riches, Jesus said with men, these exams cannot be passed but not with God, for with God, these exams will be passed. But God will not help a man whose trust and confidence is in riches. So we want to look at factors that will enable God to help you. If you want to pass this exam, you need to consider these factors because they are parameters by which whether God will help you or not. If you have a lot of money and your confidence is in God, he will help you. If you have very little money and your confidence is in that money, he will not help you. And if it does not help, Jesus said, no man, no man 
will be able to pass that exam and move on in life. Romans chapter 14. Please take note of these parameters and the factors that will help you to know whether you'll be helped or not. I read from verse 1 to 4. Him that is weak in the faith, receive him, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believe he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. He's just saying that vegetarians are people who are weak in faith. So if you see somebody who say, not on medical grounds, please. If you see people who say they don't eat meat because of spirituality, it means they have very weak faith. So when you see someone eating meat and eating, believing that uh, because food is for the stomach, faith is for the heart. And food doesn't get to the heart. It goes to the stomach. So food and faith have no correlation. So whether you eat vegetables, some say, I don't eat, veg I don't eat meat, I'm a vegetarian, it has no effect on spirituality. In fact, there are, more, there are less spiritual people. When you see somebody that eats only vegetarians, they don't eat, except on medical grounds. But for spiritual reasons, it just shows that they have very weak faith and they are very poor in spiritual things. And they make it look as if they are spiritual, but they are not. That is the word of God. Let me repeat it clearly. One believes he may eat all things. Another who is weak in faith eats only herbs. However, let not him that eateth despise him that eat not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God has received him. So, God will receive you, whether you're a vegetarian or you're a meat eater or a fish eater, whichever one, you will receive what is important to him is faith anyway. Number four, who are you to judge another man's servant? To his master he stands or falleth. Yea, he shall be held up, for God is able to make him stand. If you want God to help you, you don't judge people. You're judging ministers of God condemning the, on the day of exams, he will not raise a hand to help that person. Never. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. There are those God has authorized to judge and they have the spirit of judgment upon them and they can judge. But if you are not authorized by God to judge his ministers and the events and doctrines in his body, Actually, God doesn't even authorize you to judge his ministry. He authorizes you to address doctrines. You are to address doctrines, not people. That man stands before his master, and before his master, he standeth or falleth. But if you go about judging them on the day when you need help from heaven, he will not raise his hand. He will just watch you. And so you have to be very, very careful. In Matthew chapter 7, I read from verse 1 to 2. Judge not, so that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. And with the measure you meet, it shall be measured back to you again. So if you need help, and you are judging people, God will come down and look at all your faults and judge you, instead of giving you help. In John chapter 7, John chapter 7, I'll read verse 24. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And if we go back to that Romans chapter 14 again, Romans chapter 14 from verse 10, it went on to say, Why do you judge your brother? For why do you set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us must give account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So I will advise you, according to Matthew chapter 5, instead of trying to remove the log in your brother's, sorry, the speck, your brother's eye, remove the log in your own eye and God will help you. Amen. And like I will say 
that the Lord Jesus spoke to the woman caught in adultery, if you need help from God, if you are without any sin, then you can cast the first stone. And so those who call um, ministers of God thieves, which we know truly that are thieves, ministers of God, thieves, or those who call them thieves, should also be sure that they have never in their entire life defrauded a maid in allowances, defrauded a staff in benefits, defrauded the poor in their entitlement, <laughs> defrauded God in his own, and you have not defrauded the government in their taxes. You have not told any lie. You know how people do when they were filing for tax? They tell all kinds of lies, and um, they say all sorts that they have these, they have those to cut tax. You must make sure you have not done all that. Then you'll be able to stand justified before God to receive all the help that you need so that you don't be into trouble. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, one of the parameters for you to receive help from God is that you do not judge people. Praise the Lord. Now, um, we're looking at another parameter in um, getting help from God. Number two, givers will be helped while stingy people will never be helped. Oh no, I'm rocking that boat again. Psalm 20. Psalm 20. And I read verse 1 to 4. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. Psalm 20, verse 1 to 4. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary. Strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. I'll repeat Psalm 20, verse 1 to 4. I didn't write it. The Lord wrote it. He said, may the Lord hear you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he help you from his sanctuary above on your exam day. May he strengthen you out of Zion. Then may he remember all your offerings and accept all your bond offerings. In Acts chapter 10, and I'll read Acts 10. These are people that get help from God. I'll read from verse 1 to 6. Then, sorry, Acts 10 from verse, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God. With all his house, he gave much alms to the people. Pray to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him, saying, Cornelius. And he looked unto him, he was afraid, and said, What is it, Lord? And he said to him, Thy prayers and thy alms, not thy prayers only, thy prayers and thy alms are come up to God for a memorial before God, and for that I have been sent to come and help you. So God will send help to give us those who remember God in their offerings, who remember the poor and the less privileged. You must give to God that which belongs to God. And I've said something. You can't give to the poor what belongs to God, and we can't give to God what belongs to the poor. You must give to God what belongs to God. Give to Caesar, which is the government, which is their taxes, what belongs to the government. You must give to the poor what belongs to the poor. In the book of Luke, there's a rich man who went to hell because he couldn't help Lazarus who fed with crumbs at his table. He had so much for himself, he was blessed and refused to be a blessing. And I don't know, God would have saved him. God would have sent, the way he sent help to Colinio saying, I remember your arms. There's a woman 
whose husband was a prophet and he died and the, the, the sons were to be taken because he had borrowed money. And she cried out to help and said, oh God, remember, remember the good deeds my husband did. And you must remember that God helps give us those who give to his cause, those who give his own to him, who gives him what is his, who don't hold back what belongs to God, those who help the poor. You can't just help the poor and not give God his due. On the day of trouble, you have no offerings. You can't just give to God and not help the poor. Bible says, he that give to the poor, lend to God in the day of trouble. He will answer him and he will repay you back with interest. So they work together. You give to God and you give to the less privileged. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. I remember um, when Jesus was going to is it Jerusalem or Jericho, there was a man called Zacchaeus, short man. He couldn't see Jesus. So he climbed up the tree where Jesus was going to pass. And when Jesus got to the tree, he looked at him and said, Zacchaeus, come down. For today, I will dine in your house. That's not enough. In Mark 14, the Bible says there was a Pharisee who was a leper who invited Jesus to come and dine in his house. And Jesus dined in his house. While Jesus was eating, the leper was sitting on the same table with Jesus. Jesus entering your house is not the breakthrough. While Jesus said, a woman with an alabaster box of women came, was anointed Jesus' feet, used her hair to wash his feet, and that man was saying, ah, ah, look at this man. This man of God doesn't know. Instead of him to ask Jesus to heal him, he was distracted like many. Coronavirus had distracted him. But he didn't get help because I'm sure he was a stingy man. Because he said, ah, they ought to have sold this. He wasn't, he was one of those very religious people that said, what you have, give to the poor. You don't need to give to all these men of God. That's the kind of person he was. He died with leprosy because he criticized giving to the Lord. Now self-righteousness, self-justification, now saying, which sounds logical, this could have been sold and given to the poor. And Jesus reprimanded him. And you see all those people who say, you don't need to give anything to the Lord. Just give to the less privileged. They are going to be like that leper. Most of them will die with their leprosies. Now, this Zacchaeus, Jesus said today, I will dine in your house. Then he made a statement. He said, those I have defrauded, I will return four times. Jesus said, today, salvation. Now, Jesus dining in his house didn't bring salvation. That doesn't guarantee salvation. When he now did what was right, to return stolen money back to the people he defrauded, Jesus said, today salvation has come into your life, for you are also a son of Abraham. It's not enough to call on the Lord. You must do what you ought to do. You must give God his due. You must give the poor their due. And you must take yours. Because it's also a curse for you to give God and give the poor and not eat from your labor. It's a curse. Amen. Another parameter the Lord will consider is those who are walking by faith. In Psalm 37, any person who is walking by faith, God will help him. Any person who is trusting God, God will help him. I read verse 40. Psalm 37, I'll read verse 40. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked. Okay, let me back up to verse 37. Mark the perfect man, behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord he is their strength in the time of trouble, and the Lord shall help them. 
The perfect man is a man walking by faith. In Psalm 46, that's another Psalm of David, Psalm 46, it went on to say that that's the, um, from verse 1, say, God is our refuge, our strength, a very present help in trouble. And say, no matter what happens, God in verse 5 is in our midst. We shall not be moved. He will help us just at the right time. But this is for a person whose fear and trust is in the Lord. Amen. In Psalm 115 from verse 9, he said, All Israel trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, for he is your help and your shield. He said, You who are great and small, trust in the Lord is your help and your shield. Any person that is trusting in the Lord, God will help them pass the exam. Any person, any person, God will help them to pass the exam. And that was the problem of that rich man. He didn't trust in the Lord. He trusted in his riches. Now, I'm going quickly. God helps people. You know, I, I, I look at one of the statements Solomon made to the Lord. And he said, I am but a little child before you. In Matthew chapter 11. If you want God to help you, you need to imbibe these attributes. Learn to trust God. Learn to give. And... Um, Learn to um, give, trust God, and don't go about judging everybody. When one man buys a jet, you condemn him. Another buy a car, you condemn him. And everything, you condemn and condemn and condemn and condemn. In the day of trouble, he will fold his hands and be watching you. He will not help that person. In Matthew chapter 11, I want to read from verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and you have revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no one knows the Son, but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, but he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So God reveals and helps people with childlike heart. People who have this childlike heart. You know, people with childlike heart, they're very simple. You know, there are people who are complicated in life. If you tell them good morning, they say it's because he's, uh, this has happened to you. They misread everything in life. They have a complicated mind. God wants you to have a childlike heart. He said he reveals these things to babes, to childlike, he call it gibberish, childlike heart. He doesn't like complicated heart. In Luke, when he was talking about the parable of the sower, he said those who have a good heart, good heart will make it to the end. That what good heart means, they're pliable and simple. They're not complicated. Pliable and simple, not complicated. There are people who are complicated. They say, good morning. They look at you, don't mind him. Good afternoon, yeah, yeah, man. Good evening. Eh, it's because he's just made money. That's why he's greeting us. It's just complicated. But God wants you to have a liberal mind and look at things from a simplified and a simple perspective in life. In that same Matthew, I'll read chapter 19. Chapter 19, and I'll read verse 14. Jesus said, Suffer, allow the little children... Forbid them not to approach me, for of them is the kingdom of heaven. So meaning, except you have a childlike heart, you cannot access the kingdom of God. And you cannot access the kingdom of God except you pass your exam. So one of the conditions to assessing the kingdom of God is to be as a little child. So one of the conditions to get help from God is to be as a little child. Don't have a complicated heart. Hearts that don't forgive. There are people, they don't forgive. In 1 Corinthians 14, it tells you one, one of the reasons, one of the ways to have a childlike heart. 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. However, in malice, be ye children. So one of the best ways to know children is in malice. People who will recount all your faults, recount all the wrongs. 
when they want to report a case, they say, very good. Ah, I even, I've been looking for somebody to report this man to. First, let me start when year 2020. This problem started in 1988. As of January, it was around the 15th. In fact, it was an evening. It was drizzling on that day. Jesus Christ! This man did this wrong. And I was looking at him. The next time he did it was March 1992. In fact, it was around this period when they were doing this festival. Then he recounts. Jesus! Then to follow up, in the year 1999, it was around December, because I remember that time we just came from a Christmas party. Then he did this. We have not finished there. Then in the year 2003, that 2003 was two. One was March 18. The other one is November 21. Jesus, he said, the malice be children. Children, as you offend them, they get angry. As you plead with them in five minutes, they have forgotten all the wrong. He said, if you hold to wrong, he said, the God of heaven will never help you in this life. Never. That person will never make it in this life. Never, never, never. They had, they are people that don't forgive. They hold on to wrongs. They hold on to faults. They hold on, they have record of wrongs. They keep evidence of wrongs. It's, they seal it, not only in hard drives, they have it in paper, they have it in the um, in laptop, they have it in a storage, in bank, just no money. Wrongs of people. He said, God will never help such people in this life. And whoever associates with those kind of people, that person too will never find help before God. Never. Never. So he said, in malice be children. So what does it mean to have a childlike heart? You forgive readily. Once you forgive readily, no matter your exam, God will help you, you will pass. If you don't forgive easily, that man will not pass because God will never, never help such a person. Amen. But he said, don't be children in understanding. Be matured. But be children in malice. And I remember the Lord said, except you be like one of these little children, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.